Hello, it's Paul, and welcome once again to Paul Plays Shenzhen IO. It's a puzzle programming game from Zachtronics, and we're on episode two. We're going to do the second puzzle in this one. So apologies again, I'll just say this one more time. I'm not going to go into the, the story and read out all the text and do it as a strict let's play. There are other YouTubers, there are plenty, plenty of videos showing you know all that. I'm just going to go through it as a puzzle game from the puzzles. We'll talk about it from a sort of, I don't know, semi-technical aspect in terms of what you can, can and can't do and the, and the fun from the puzzles and leave the overall story enjoyment um, to actually playing the game yourself because it is a wonderful game and I presume many, most if not all people who will be watching this will want to play it themselves or maybe not. Um, so anyway, the next puzzle we're doing is replacement factory module. So again, it's come here as an email. I've got a new one. I've got an email about about a game some some guy's daughter's written again it's all but i'm not going to go into all that let's just let's just do the do the puzzle so open design so here we are this is the first one we've got a blank board now unlike the other one where it's kind of half done and we finish it up this is a brand new board with control in control out Control in is a simple input connected to factory equipment. Control out is a simple output output connected to other factory equipment. The signal from control in should be multiplied by two and copied to control out. So we see this is obviously what they're going to send us. So this is like each one of these uh, different colored grids is one of the cycles and we can see the input varies as time goes by. We've got to multiply by two and produce this output. So if I run it now, we've just got a single dead output. It's doing absolutely nothing. So we've got a red, well, I mean, part of the places where the output should have been zero, we are completely wrong. So we only have one of these MC4000s, which is the little of the programmable chips. And again, four inputs. The P's are for these control outs. The X's are for this XBUS thing, which we haven't got to yet. And so you put your chip wherever you fancy on the control board and then you start drawing. Can't draw it there, that's obviously wrong. In and P0 and out on P1. So again, then we write our little assembly language um, routine. So what I'm going to do initially is just do it wrong. So I'm going to move P0 to the accumulator which is kind of your internal register, what you can do arithmetic on, and we'll, we'll see those in a statement. I've looked, at, I've looked at the manual, and I think I know what instructions we need to do this. It's great. The manual, again, is a lovely, lovely touch. Um, again, I haven't printed it out. I keep meaning to, but it's it's 40-something pages. Could be wrong on that. So, obviously, I'd like to use somebody else's printer. Um, <laughs> no, I, I kid. Um... But it's a lovely, and there's instructions. It's 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 great. So it's a it's a lovely little device. So move P0 to the accumulator. So we get the contents, whatever we're seeing on this pin here. Let's say we just move accumulator to P1. Now the other interesting thing is, if I just run that part, it it does nothing, and obviously the power is increasing up hugely. You have to put these sleep instructions in. So it can pretty much do an infinite, I suppose, like, you know, even though it looks like it's sleeping for one second, what it's really doing is saying the processor itself is so fast compared to the actual real time. You could do as many as instructions as you want. Now, they will eat up power, which we're seeing here. And then when you do sleep, it, if you do sleep one, it sort of then progresses one cycle on in the simulation. It's kind of what's happening, I believe. So to semi-fix that, we'll do a sleep one there and run that again. And you can see we're just outputting the input. So where it's zero, again, we're right. Where it's not in zero, we are currently wrong. And it says, I mean, so again, it would be very hard to figure out exactly what the rule is here, but the information tab here does explain to you the rule, or explain to me the rule. It says the signal from control in should be multiplied by two and copied to control out. Fabulous. So, to do that, there is an instruction called multiply, which multiplies the value in the accumulator 
buy a value and leaves the amount the result in the accumulator. So if I just do mul2 there, what that in effect does is whatever's in the accumulator already, multiply it by two and leave the result in the accumulator. Yep, I believe that's right. And there we go. So it does the first one, as you can see, or the first three maybe, at this slowish speed. Checking them, so you've got like to get through this. There's eight test runs to get through, with the first three or four, maybe at a slow speed. And then it does the last four at this whizzy sort of speed. And there we go. So right on the money. I mean, everybody's obviously doing that puzzle pretty much the same way. Um, that's the control signal amplifier puzzle using this one part. So again, simple, just a, another, uh, some, um, the game sort of eases you in gently, I think, into this, to this programming language. Uh, the first, the first one was just sort of completing it. The second one is just showing you this multiplication instruction. I'm not sure there's much else we could do, we could do here, um, to improve it or make it, we've only got the one part of this. I don't think the track lengths or anything matter. So that's it. So that is episode two, and it was called, as you can see when we go, but it was control signal amplifier. And when we go back, the way the game works then, is then you get these emails coming in for new parts, um, new, new puzzles, new parts you have to design in this electronics company, each one in, in the form of a puzzle. So thank you for watching this. Um, if you enjoyed it, please do drop a like on it. Um, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that'd be lovely too. And as I was saying in the last video, I have a number of for the full gameplay in terms of the puzzles from Infizi Infini Factory and TIS 100 up on my channel. If you're interested in them, TIS 100 is a, is a is a game much more similar to this, but much more sort of cut down, black and white, old school DOS looking game. Whereas Infinity Factory is a kind of it takes the sort of Minecraft block building mechanics and makes a very very clever factory building puzzle game out of it. Um, both very different games, but but very good. And by the same people who made this electronics, of whom I have no relation whatsoever. I just must be made from the same cloth and enjoy enjoy their games. So thank you again for watching. Bye now.